subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia newsline i'm yeshi chanzo Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday the 23rd of February. India's foreign minister says willing to make investments in forex staff Sri Lanka. Pakistan still at the center of terrorism I washing FATF reveals think tank report. And Silent international recognition of Afghan government underway says Taliban leader Haqqani. And now for all the details. India's foreign minister S J Shankar said at the Asia Economic Dialogue 2022 on Wednesday that India is willing to make investments in Sri Lanka to help it ease an ongoing financial crisis. Sri Lanka has been suffering a severe shortage of foreign exchange with reserves hitting 2.36 billion US dollars. leaving it unable to pay for fuel shipments and even food imports India's foreign minister S J Shankar speaking during the Asia Economic Dialogue 2022 on Wednesday said that the country is willing to make investments in Sri Lanka to help it ease an ongoing financial crisis with Sri Lanka's health minister Kehelia Rambokwela among the panelists J J Shankar assured that this is the time to demonstrate that india's neighborhood first policy really delivers sri lanka has been suffering a severe shortage of foreign exchange with reserves hitting 2.36 billion us dollars leading to widespread power cuts in recent days after being left unable to pay for fuel shipments the island nation has to also repay about 4 billion dollars in debt repayments this year Earlier this month Sri Lanka had also signed a 500 million dollar credit line with India to import fuel. This is the time for us to demonstrate uh, that neighborhood first uh, really delivers not just in terms of lines of credit but also in terms of investments in terms of you know if indian tourists go out if indian business goes out if even the indian government if we if there are investments we can make which will shore up Uh, other people's economy and uh, you know expand employment this is really what they need at this moment and i can assure them that india will rise to that occasion sri lanka's energy minister on wednesday said the country has paid 35.3 million dollars for a 40000 tons diesel shipment seeking to stave off rolling power cuts long queues of vehicles were witnessed at petrol stations after the power regulator on tuesday announced hours long load shedding this week to conserve fuel stock the country of 22 million people requires about 4000 tons of diesel every day to run multiple thermal power plants India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state underwent polling for the fourth phase on Wednesday for several key seats in the ongoing assembly polls elections in the state are being held in seven phases and will conclude on March 7 Hindu Muslim disputes are often used for political gains in the state However, anti-incumbency and discontent farmer protest in its stronghold of Western Uttar Pradesh are also expected to be a factor in the elections for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling BJP. Polling for the fourth phase of the ongoing assembly elections in India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state spread across 59 constituencies in 9 districts was held on Wednesday. Uttar Pradesh is witnessing a multi-cornered contest with India's ruling BJP, Bharatiya Janata Party, Samajwadi Party, Rashtriya Lok Dal Alliance and the Bahujan Samaj Party and Congress as principal contenders. People were seen outside polling stations casting their votes to elect their leaders. Achhi aur nek danga phasa ladai jhagda ye sab na ho. State capital Lucknow and hotbed of farmer protest in Uttar Pradesh Lakhimpur Kheri were among the key seats where voters turned up to exercise their franchise. Security has been heightened in Lakhimpur Kheri that hogged the limelight after eight people were mowed down by vehicle during farmers protest. Surrounded by police and paramilitary personnel, India's junior interior minister Ajay Mishra Deni, whose son Ashish Mishra is accused in the case, also cast his vote on Wednesday. 
Uttar Pradesh, home to more than 200 million people and the bellwether of national politics, is currently ruled by Hindu monk Yogi Adityanath from Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP. Meanwhile, taking a pot shot at previous governments in the state, PM Modi on Wednesday said that the dynasts want sport to be always at their feet and keep revolving around them. Addressing a public rally in Barabanki, PM said his party cares for the poor in an attempt to woo voters for the remaining three phases of the seven-phase elections. The counting of votes will take place on March 10. Moving on, a recent report by think tank International Forum for Rights and Security has stated that Pakistan continues to remain an epicenter of terrorism and other criminal activities, while it is eyewashing financial action task force by making claims of fulfilling compliance. This comes as global terror financing watchdog has been holding meetings to assess actions of Pakistan which remains in its grey list since 2018. Pakistan is eye-washing Global Terror Financing Watchdog FATF, the Financial Action Task Force, by making claims of fulfilling compliance at a time when Pakistan continues to remain an epicenter of terrorism and other criminal activities. Canada-based think tank International Forum for Rights and Security, or IFRAS, has said in a report, the fate of Pakistan hangs in the balance as the watchdog is holding plenary meetings this week to assess its actions while it has remained on FATF's grey list since 2018 for failing to effectively prosecute UN-designated terror outfits on its soil. The IFRAS report cites many incidents where Pakistan has not done anything to combat the brewing terrorism in the country. It mentions Lahore High Court's verdict in November 2021 when it acquitted six aides of Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba chief and mastermind of 2008 Mumbai terror attacks Hafiz Saeed in a terror financing case, months after giving them nine years imprisonment. It is still the epicenter of terrorism and other criminal activities hampering both its immediate neighbours, India and Afghanistan, the report states. This past weekend, scores of Afghan, Pashtun and Baloch dissidents in exile also held a demonstration outside FATF headquarters in Paris and highlighted Pakistan's role in terror sponsoring and demanded the watchdog to blacklist the country. No country has formally recognized the Taliban-led administration that seized power in Afghanistan last year. But they see talks as a necessity given the depth of humanitarian crisis in the country. Highlighting that there has been a positive improvement in the political sector, senior Taliban leader Anas Haqqani has said that a process of silent or tacit recognition of the Islamic Emirate by the international community is underway. Senior Taliban leader Anas Haqqani on Tuesday said that a process of silent or tacit recognition of the Islamic Emirate by the international community is underway and there have been positive improvements in the political sector. Haqqani, the younger brother of Sirajuddin Haqqani, the interior minister of Taliban regime in a public meeting with the tribal leaders and local officials in Khost province said differences should not harm the country's national values and the security forces should abide by the amnesty decree of the Islamic Emirate leader. Foreign powers have been reluctant to recognize the Taliban administration which took over Afghanistan in August last year. No country has so far recognized the ruling government despite Taliban's insistence that it has met all the conditions for being officially recognized. Millions of Afghans have been plunged deeper into poverty since the last year's Taliban takeover, which resulted in disruption to aid programs and deteriorating food security. Hard-won gains in women's rights over the last two decades have been quickly reversed, and reports from international rights experts and labor organizations in recent weeks painted a bleak picture for female employment and access to public space. In news from Nepal, Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba met main opposition CPN UML's chairman KP Sharma Oli on Tuesday and solicited support to ratify US-funded MCC, Millennium Challenge Corporation Grant Agreement through Parliament. Oli reminded PM Dioba that his party is staging protests in the Parliament to meet its genuine demands and that his party won't be able to take part in the parliamentary process unless those demands are addressed. The Parliament session on Monday witnessed obstruction by lawmakers of CP and UML and protests by political parties, including those forming the ruling coalition. 
Violent protests were also seen in the streets of Kathmandu against the grant. Meanwhile, Nepal Parliament has until February 28 to ratify the deal. The 500 million US dollars MCC grant that Nepal and the US signed in late 2017 has been the bone of contention for Washington and China. Opponents say that the agreement would undermine local laws and that Nepal would not have sufficient oversight over the board directing projects. Piles of garbage has accumulated on roads of Nepal's Kathmandu Valley after locals living near the Sisto landfill site have barred vehicles to dump waste for the past 10 days, demanding the government to upgrade a section of a highway. The littered waste is giving rise to a foul smell and poses head threat. Piles of garbage has accumulated around the road sites in parts of Nepal's Kathmandu Valley after locals living near the Sisto landfill site have barred vehicles from entering the area to dumb ways for the past 10 days. Residents along the Pasang Lamo Highway have blocked the roads to the landfill site, claiming that the government has not implemented. Residents along the Pasang Lamo Highway have blocked the roads to the landfill site, claiming that the government has not implemented the agreement to blacktop a section of the highway as per an agreement. The littered piles of garbage dumped by household shops, hotels and businesses in urban areas is giving rise to a false smell. Locals lamented the authorities have failed to resolve the issue and instead requested them to manage trash from their homes. The Kathmandu metropolitan city generates over 500 tons of waste daily while the valley generates double that amount. Reports suggest around 200 vehicle transport garbage every day to Sistol from the Kathmandu Valley. Indian teen Grandmaster Ramesh Babu Pragnananda, who defeated world champion Magnus Carlsen in the Air Things Master Chess Tournament this week, has said that the achievement has given him tremendous self-belief. Although he missed out a spot in the quarterfinals of the online rapid chess tournament, he is being lauded worldwide for his achievement that has added another feather in his cap. Indian teen grandmaster Ramesh Babu Pragnandanda from southern Tamil Nadu state has been among the elite in chess since 2013. However, the 16-year-old has stunned all after defeating world number one champion Magnus Carlsen this week in the ongoing Air Things Masters Chess Tournament. After India's five-time world chess champion Vishwanathan Anand, Ramesh Babu is the sole player to have defeated Carlsen. He said that beating Magnus has given him a tremendous self-belief and the achievement was a result of sheer hard work and strategy. It was very hard because the game also starts at uh, 3 a.m. in the morning, in the early morning and uh, I also prepared for it by sleeping every day, changing my routine uh, to, uh, to adjust to the schedule and I think it really worked out uh, and yeah, I was also working hard uh, in chess terms also and uh, yeah, I, I was happy in general to win. It gives me huge confidence. Unfortunately, Ramesh Babu on Wednesday failed to qualify for the knockouts and finished 11th in the 16-player online rapid chess tournament. Nevertheless, the teen is getting praises and messages are pouring in from various sports personalities, including former Indian cricketer Sachin Tendulkar and chess player Vishwanathan Anand. His achievement has added another gem in Indian chess history. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.